you really seen a city that used to be one of the best in the country. You've just seen it become hollowed out. And it's a direct result of leftist policy and leftist ideology. I never saw a California license plate growing up in Florida. Then I become governor. We have Californians flooding, leaving San Francisco to go to Miami and other places. It was intolerable to live in this area because they don't care about crime, they don't care about homelessness. No one wants to live under those circumstances. On a federal level, how do you think you could make the sort of environment for law enforcement more positive? You know, there's probably a few levers you can pull, but basically to target these Soros-funded prosecutors who get elected like they had here in San Francisco, and they get elected on a platform not to enforce laws they don't like. I've talked to people that have moved to Florida from here and other parts of the country, and they say, you know, someone mugged me or they robbed my car or they even broke into my home. No prosecution. I mean, can you imagine that? Of course you're gonna get more crime as a result. Whatever they do, we try to do the opposite on a lot of this stuff. I mean, I think they're very tolerant about illegal drug use, particularly public. We will not countenance that. And then their approach to criminal justice has been a total disaster. Right here, the Nancy Pelosi Federal Building, in their front lawn, we've seen a lot of really young drug addicts here. In some respects, this is the logical culmination of the Pelosi liberalism that has uh, been growing in San Francisco for many decades now. Hey, how you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you, Good to see you, man. Nice You're you. city police? Yes, yeah, How long have you been doing it? Uh, 17 years. God bless you, man. Uh, you got your work cut out for you here. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Maybe thanks sir. so much for your service. Good luck, sir. We appreciate you guys. You guys deserve better support. I mean, I it's un it's it. unacceptable that you're going out there risking your life. You can apprehend someone and they just let them go. I mean, it's absurd. So, yes, it is. yeah. Well, we appreciate it, sir. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great to see you guys. We've been very strong on law and order in Florida, and we were doing that at a time when it wasn't even popular, like during the Floyd riots. Our crime rate right now is at a 50-year low. If those San Francisco cops wanted to come to Florida, they'd get a $5,000 recruitment bonus right off the top. That's a good deal. Yeah. So it's good. The activists we talked to that are on the ground trying to work with the homeless crisis and the drug crisis, one of the things they brought up is actually the intersection of illegal immigration and crime issues here, and that the fentanyl crisis is driven a lot by the illegal immigration problem we have here. You've actually had some public spats with Governor Newsom over that. Can you talk about that some? What uh, Biden's allowed to happen at the border is killing Americans with the fentanyl. Our view in Florida is we're gonna help at the border, we're doing that. We're not a sanctuary state, we've banned sanctuary cities. If you bring in illegals from the border and smuggle into Florida, we're gonna hold you accountable for doing that. As president, we'll crack down on sanctuary cities nationwide and sanctuary states. We can withhold funding or whatever. We'll pull every lever uh, that we have and we'll marshal all the assets, military, a civilian, you name it. This has gone on for decades, and yet it's never been fixed. We'll bring it to a conclusion. Speaking of sanctuary states, California also defines itself as now a transgender sanctuary. Florida has taken very different approach to this, a lot of new policies. What would you do differently, federally speaking, in terms of handling the transgender policies? We said, no sex change operations, sterilization, or puberty blockers for minors. They are sterilizing these kids. And what we found is as some of these kids get older, they have huge problems as a result of this. Many of them have huge regrets. What does California do? They encourage kids behind their parents' backs to go from other jurisdictions where they don't have the ability to get this type of gender surgery and come to California and do it as minors. If you have a kid and the kid says, you know, I know I was born a boy, I'm 12, maybe I think I'm a girl now. If you don't accept that, you could lose custody of your kid. That's what they're debating right now. So that's a massive attack on parental rights. And I think what the modern left says is, you know, they think parents have a, a small role in the upbringing of the kid. And if there's a clash between leftist ideology and parental rights, they want the leftist ideology to trump the rights of the parents. In Florida, we completely reject that. Can that carry over into the federal level? As president, could you carry over some of those policies 
on a federal level? Yeah, I think so. I mean, first of all, Washington's different than a state. There's no question about that. The swamp is more entrenched. The bureaucracy is way more entrenched. But you know that going in. One of the things I did as governor before I got in, I had a compendium of all the powers of the governor, statutory, constitutional, customary, so I knew which levers to push. Same thing's gonna happen as president. And what you say is, okay, I've got this agenda, but I gotta get it through a constitutional system, so what levers can you pull to be able to advance it? And so we'll be very active, we'll be on offense, and we're not gonna just sit like a potted plant like some of these Republicans, hoping that good things happen. We're gonna make these things happen, and you also have the bully pulpit, and you can really put issues on the agenda in a big way. We did that in Florida to effect, but a governor's more limited in terms of the reach that they have, so we'll be using all tools at our disposal. Some people have accused you of being kind of authoritarian. How would you defend your policies? Well, I think of anyone you look over the last three or four years, we took more action to limit government involvements in people's lives. Eliminating COVID lockdowns, we would go into local communities and I would overrule them. And I would say, you can't force masks. You can't force kids to be locked out of school. You can't force businesses to close. Now, to me, I think those are actions to promote freedom. I don't think those are authoritarian at all. Now, I think what some people get frustrated with on the left is we have a lot of success enacting policies, but I'm getting this stuff through the legislature. So that's the way the constitutional system works. We say we want a parent's bill of rights. We work with the legislature. They deliver it, put on my desk, I sign it. We say parents' rights in education that we fought Disney over to say no gender ideology in the schools. Legislature passes it, I sign it, it goes into law. That's the way it should be done. And I think that you know we've taken very strong action to protect and expand people's freedom. And ultimately, that's the name of the game. When you don't do those basics, the whole quality of life can collapse. And the fact that that's happened here in one of what would have been one of the wealthiest areas in the entire world, you know, it shows you the ideas that we fight over, they matter. And when put into place in Florida, our ideas, we've thrived. When the left-wing ideas are put in here, the whole place crumbles. What wins the 2024 election? What argument or quality, Democrat or Republican, what's the deciding factor? If the election is a referendum on Biden's failures, and we frame it as that, with a candidate like me offering a better path for America, we will win the election. If it becomes a referendum on side issues or other things, and Biden's allowed to stay in his basement all campaign like he did last time, then I fear that, that the Democrats will be able to win. And so focusing on his failures, how he's made America worse, and how we're gonna do it better, not only do you get Republicans, you're gonna get these independents. That's what we did in Florida. We won independents by 18 percentage points. We won over 60% of Hispanics because we were identifying the issues that matter to them. We were fighting the fringe left on all the things they're trying to do. And I think there's a huge majority coalition for that. People want a restoration of sanity in this country, and we can deliver that. Governor, thank you so much. Thank you.